Could you give us a, a brief intro to you know you and perhaps uh, explain what it is that caught your attention and why this becomes important in your life at this time? Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much again, and uh, I'm really honored to be back here with the CFI. You guys are great, and you guys are helping the field. Uh, the way uh, my my own group is being helped, and uh, you provide the science to each and every one of us that, are, that is doing this and sharing this passionately uh, to the field. But and again, thank you. And it is a great honor to be with this uh, four people that are always been uh, a, a leader uh, in giving information to this field, to the world, actually. Yes, uh, I am uh, originally from the Philippines uh, in 1983. I migrated to the US. I am a foreign medical graduate there, but uh, as a foreign medical graduate, it's always our hope and dream to be able to be trained uh, right where the right where all our books are written, right where all our systems are made. So in that year, I came here, I took my boards here, and uh, since then, I've been a licensed physician to practice medicine in the U.S. I went into pediatrics first, and then uh, I was gonna. Uh, start my neonatology fellowship uh, when uh, a friend of mine convinced me to go to anesthesia. So I did another residency. And then after that, I went and did uh, interventional pain management uh, as a subspecialty. Uh, before I went there, I was going to be a pedi pediatric anesthesiologist because I was a pediatrician. But I became in love with the specialty of uh, chronic pain management. So that's what I'm here. And so um, I've been practicing in DC and in two from 83 to 2005. In 2005, I moved to Bowling Green, Kentucky, and then helped out the pain practice. And then we were successful in building it from one clinic to six clinics. And, uh, and that was a, a great achievement. And uh, of course, after that also, it kind of broke my back. And uh, I'll tell you my story why I got involved in this one. So every time we do procedures, we wear a 20 pound jacket uh, that we, we will, uh, that protects us from uh, x-ray radiation things. And so from six procedures a day, when I, when I came in, we built it to 40 procedures a day. And that's how uh, it was very taxing to the back and uh, doing all those things by yourself. And then, uh, but we rotate though, there's seven of us that rotate. And then, uh, but in 2015, uh, I came home from a long flight and then uh, all of a sudden I had this severe discomfort that I felt in my back. It went down to my right foot and uh, I kind of have an idea what it is. It's within my specialty. And these are the kinds of things that we see and so I have my my my, my back um, image, uh, have a picture. And then so after that um, procedure, um, I went with my wife to the mall, but the radiologist called me right away. And just about 10 minutes after he read it and he said, you need to see a neurosurgeon as soon as possible. So I have a neurosurgeon friend. I called him and I said, uh, this is the description of what was seen by the radiologist. What do I need to do? And he said, yes, he's right. You need to have these things fixed as soon as possible. But uh, I have a bias. My uh, specialty is chronic pain management. And uh, most of my patients have uh, procedures uh, like this one that were not successful. And I just don't want to be one of them. So uh, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. So it took five other uh, new, uh, spine surgeons and neurosurgeons that I have to talk to uh, to convince me that I need to have it done. So I did, I was convinced hey, all of them were unanimous. Yes. Ed, what were you, What I've had only 10 back surgeries. Um, which, what were they looking to do, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, they were gonna, they were fusing uh, one level and they were gonna decompress uh, four mm -hmm. levels and then fuse it and have rods and have bone plates and screws. And that was done. And so, uh, and I kind of really didn't want to do it. 
but of course I was still in the traditional medical things that these are the things that we needed to do. So I submitted myself for that procedure. I did my research. Uh, there's a center in, in Philadelphia that is, is their specialty is just this one, a repair for this. In fact, they're, they're, my surgeon's specialty is to put football player back to play after a spinal injury. So, uh, so I said mine was not really nowhere from that spinal injury. And uh, and my cousin who works there as uh, an anesthesiologist gave me a tip that this is the guy that has the most success rate and he's the best. And so I chose him and he has a 90% success rate. And fortunately, after the procedure, I belong to the 10% failure. And so after that, he told me that we could redo this as soon as possible. And I said, no, <laughs> I think I could, I, I could just help myself with this one. And uh, we, we, we x-rayed, he did not really, it was, it was, everything's good, but because I don't feel good, we're just gonna redo it and find it when he opens it, whether we could see something. Uh, but on x-rays and imaging, everything went, uh, it, it looks good. So I said, no, I'm gonna just keep it that way. And so in short, after that procedure, I became a patient of my own specialty. Uh, why is that? Because uh, I, instead of getting better, I was worse. I was placed on five medications and uh, to take care of my sleep, to take care of my severe pain, I had to be given uh, two uh, controlled substances and then uh, I have to uh, be given a uh, medicine that would confuse my brain, that there's no pain in there. And I was given anti-inflammatories. I was uh, submitted to physical therapies and uh, acupuncture and all those kinds of things, uh, hostel. Uh, so I was on those medications that I prescribed myself for the last 30 years. And then, but it did not help. I could not be comfortable at nighttime, every hour, this discomfort in my back would wake me up. I have to change position so that I could at least have uh, a rest from this uh, severe discomfort. So every hour I wake up, every hour I wake up. And this was my life uh, all throughout. I was told by my surgeon I could no longer work, but I was not ready for that. I cannot accept it. So I continued to, to work and uh, I, I kind of have a, kind of a, a little privilege that I could choose what I'm gonna do. So I dropped my pain practice. I just manage uh, nurse anesthetists to do procedures. I run the schedule in the operating room and, uh, but I would need a walker to, to, to go to work and to ambulate. I have a walker and I was on this medications. And- uh, Hey, Ed. Yes. If you don't mind, I, I, how long were you like that? I mean, from the, how, how what period of time were you like? I mean, I, I'm reliving it, unfortunately. Um, um, yeah, it's more than a year uh, before I saw, it's, it's exactly 14 months before I, I, uh, I met Asiya. And then, uh, and at that time, so I refused these things. Every time I have my follow-up, this uh, second procedure was, was offered and I always refuse it until the time that I had my annual follow-up. At that time, I was already frustrated. I was already discouraged and uh, depression had hit me. I could not function well. I could not really think well, but I insisted that I just need to be to be there. But at that time, I uh, if you uh, my thoughts really just give me a scalpel. I'll do it myself. I'm gonna open this back, let this monster out of my back, and I would have relief. So I agreed to have a second uh, procedure. Uh, at that time, after my yearly follow-up. So it took two and a half months uh, for the surgeon to, to, to have a space for me. He was a busy one. So, but that was 
that worked well for me because it was at this time that I was introduced to ASEA. And then um, the thing is that it, uh, it was my brother-in-law who is not in the medical field. He was an accountant and he just had a, a great re, uh, re experience with with ASEA, with his wife, who's been asthmatic and diabetic and this, this conditions were, were uh, and these conditions were really taken care of and uh, their wife almost reverted back to normal uh, instead of having this thing. So they shared about it. They heard that it can it, it can do some things for the discomfort. And it was my my wife's brother, older brother. So uh, culturally, we respect our older brothers. We just uh, say yes and yes <laughs> if it's an elder that would tell you. So uh, I he just wants me to take it, and I said uh, okay, I, I I'm taking it. And uh, for me, I was just respectful. That's all. I was just, uh, I show respect, but deep in my mind, it will never work. And uh, and they said, okay, let's just keep on doing the, uh, let's just start doing this. And that way I could tell him, I'm sorry, I, I, I tried it, but uh, it really didn't work. And, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Then logical. How much were you drinking? Were you applying the gel? What was your What was your routine? And did you take it correctly? Yeah. I, I, I I'm a guy. I'm a cheapo. So I just I just uh, take uh, took the minimal things they they said to just take one cup twice a day, and that was the only thing I did. Take rub the the gel in the back three times a day. That's what I did. So I just did that one and drink this one cup twice a day. And after just five days, I have the best relief ever in my sleep. Uh, for the first time in more than a year, I had, was able to sleep for straight four hours. And for me, that was kind of heaven uh, that I undisturbed sleep for four hours. And I remember that well. 10 o'clock, I slept. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I said, whoa, I thought it was still 11, but it's already 2 o'clock in the morning. And then, uh, and I was well rested. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I was ready to do a lot of things. I was ready to go to work because I'm just rested. And for 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 that first time, it would. And I said, whoa, what happened here? I, You still can't believe the stuff of things. But the next day, same thing. And the next day when I woke up, well, I already am well rested. So my brain fog less and my my focus, my mental things is it's getting better because I got rested. But not only that, it's it's sharper and I and my demeanor and my depression slowly was just improving and improving on a daily basis. It's kind of a gradual thing and all this kinds of things that's happening, but it's gradual within the period of two and a half months that I was waiting for my back my back uh, procedure. Uh, within this period of time, my sleep got better. Uh, my mental clarity was there. My depression was uh, was uh, was relieved. Uh, I have I, 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 there's joy in me now. And uh, I am just so happy about it. But within that period of time, I hated those medications that I'm on. I was able to wean myself from this. I wean myself first from the from the controlled substances that I was on, and uh, that was it. The last one that I was able was the anticonvulsant. Of course, you got to make it slow to 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 get off on that one. And then uh, I waited just a few days before I decided I'm gonna cancel this second back procedure. And I was able to do that. I called my surgeon and then this is it. I was able to cancel it. So at that time, I was not a believer in it. And now that I am a changed person, a changed life, at this time I said, whoa, this is 100% placebo. And uh, I'm still not a believer, I'm still skeptical. This is placebo for me, and that's what it is. Until, of course, I shared it with my mom. My mom 
was 90 years old. Four years before that, had a brain condition that took away her speech. And I just want her to experience the good sleep. I just want her to experience uh, the, the the good energy, the uh, the uh, the joy, the 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 thinking, the concentrations, everything in it. And that's all I was I, I was hoping for her to have. And then because it gave me a lot of uh, things. So even if I was not a believer, I said, that's just maybe mom would also be lucky like, like me. To my surprise, after two weeks of just taking also two ounces, uh, one cup twice a day, and then we rub the renew wherever the, the parts of her body is aching. And then in just two weeks time, slowly her speech came back. Words phrases to back the conversational speech. That was kind of an eye opener for me. I could not explain it in my own medical knowledge. Why four years of brain insult would still have a recovery thing. I could not explain it. I did my research about redox signaling molecules. What is this? When I look at it at that time, there were already 200,000 200,000 articles about redox signaling molecules at PubMed. And then I still could not understand it. I uh, Biochemistry was not my favorite thing. And then uh, it led me to the medical atomic physicist that stabilized these molecules. Uh, we, Dr. Gary Samuelson, we talked for hours and hours because I could not believe it. And he shared to me what he has read about the studies before he stabilized the molecules, how he reviewed it and all those things. And with that, and the, the thing that caught me is when he shared to me that, because it, operating room, uh, you're very, very excited when they said, oh, this was supposed to be a surgical wash. It's a uh, bactericidal, virucidal, fungicidal. And, but the thing that really caught me is what really ca caught Virtus, when he said, you have something in here that kills organism, but at the same time promotes cellular repair. I said, what is this? Until now, I'm still trying to get an answer. This might be part of the, the secrets that they have, but I, nobody can tell me these things, but you can't mix that. Most of the side outs that we have, like Clorox, of course, it destroys cells. That's why you got dead bacteria, dead viruses, dead things. This one would do that, but at the same time, would repair the cells. So I'm searching. Maybe a few years from now, we'll see. It's it's connected to the oxidative stress, the resiliency that is afforded, that it weeds out the thing. And the other thing that kind of make have a lot of questions in my mind is that yes, it kills bacteria, but it preserves your normal flora. It kills pathogens, but your normal flora is is there. It's preserved. I said this thing, the molecules in here works in synchrony with the body. It identifies things that are within the body that is needed by the body, and it will not touch it. If it's a pathogen, it's something that's invading and should not be there, it takes care of it. As, as, so those are the kinds of things that 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 kind of mind-blogging, what is this? But of course, you come from this kind of field that is everything that we 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 do, we discuss, we we refer to journals, we get studies. How many studies is that there? Oh, how big is this study? Oh, it's not not too convincing and everything. And then here we are, we have really limited studies compared to where the field that we came from and Maureen and, and Dr. Lee. But you have less studies, but you have more results. You have on other sides, you got a lot of studies going on. And then when you try it on things, the results is really not there from, from what they say in the studies. But here we have few studies that are better, although solid, but just few, but we have a lot of results. 
we have things that that is happening and happening just like me as i take this i've been taking this since early uh, the end of of 2016 and then uh, and then 17 and now i i've never miss it and I, I on a daily basis i take it i bring it uh, first time that we traveled uh, to the philippines one luggage when there was still no product in the Philippines at that time we traveled. One whole 50 pounds luggage was just a sea of water and a sea of things because I can't be without it. And and as I take it on a daily basis, daily basis, and as it progresses through years and years, there's just so many things that happens to my body positively. See, I am already, I'm 69, I'll be 70 next year and we are elderly we we carry a lot of we carry a lot of maintenance drugs that we have and in this kind of age every year your your maintenance drug is just increases and increases and increases but this one it's every year it's just like you're taking away things you're taking away medications you're you're cutting down on doses you're cutting down on things Pretty exciting thing, and 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 that really is the one that excites me, and and all these things. Then, and when I had this personal experience of mine, my wife had a personal experience of having a cut and was told that your fingernail will never go back to its normal things. That nail bed was 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 really cut down, and you could never recover that. That will always be a deformed fingernail. And we just soak it with this thing. And we just put Renew 28. And it healed. And it healed completely as if nothing happened. And those are the kinds of things. And I was a pediatrician. My 18-month-old granddaughter had um, an injury in the first and second layer of the skin just because of a very hot water. And then uh, it caused that injury it caused sloughing up those first and second layer, and uh, we I remember from the talk with with uh, with Dr. Gary Samuelson that hey, this Renew Twenty Eight is really good for 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 discomfort for for that thing, and it's good for this kind of condition. And I put it in within thirty minutes. My granddaughter was playing while we were driving to the hospital to have her taken care, of. and within a month she. Healed, and I was a pediatrician. I could see these things. They would scar, and that at a minimum they would have a skin discoloration. But this one did not. It fully recovered, and that is what one what the thing that uh, what that the wonders that I see, that when these things would work, completely repair the cells, it put it back to the way it was before. And and that's just what I am observing this. So I my family had great relief with it, great effect. And then uh, but when I started sharing it with my friends and uh, one of the neighbors of ours came to the house just for a referral, uh, asking for a good surgeon to take care of his approaching shoulders because he was already repaired. Nothing they could do. Physical therapy, chiropractic, everything that they've done did not work. So he just had to go. And, and I gave him a gel and I recommended the water. And then just how many, just a week, calls me and says, what is this stuff? For the first time, he could brace his shoulder. He could brace his things. Until now, he still didn't have surgery. So. This kinds of things that you are able to share, we have, uh, we have a lot of things. I, I am, when I talk about a lot of things, I, I become, I, I'm starting not to be compliant. I talk about my own language, and I don't want to do that. But it touches so many lives, and it, it, it is a, a, a technology that changes the the way. We should think about affording relief on people's condition on how can we bring them back to what their body should be functioning. They should be functioning normal. They should be doing these things. 
all the systems should be able to communicate with each other. Uh, we have we, we have a hormone that is really well orchestrated from the brain to the pituitary to the thyroid to the ovaries to the things. It's a lot of organs to control all the other hormones. And it should synchronize and communicate each other properly so our body can work better. But with stresses in life, with uh, with with different stresses, and stress is not just psychological. It's not just the physical things that we do. Uh, pathogens like infections is a stress. Toxins that we put in our body is a stress. This distorts the human role of repair and managing the whole human system of communications and properly working and that's what we call as hormesis and that's what we call as redox environment that needed to be balanced and that kind of thinking and of course when when we were trained we were just trained to think by system if something is wrong with the brain so the central nervous system you diagnose it by system then this cardiovascular system this we diagnose that it, most of the time, we don't even think cross reactions. Sometimes, of course, we, we do when, when nerves, but nothing like this. That if you, that if the rule of redox balance is not there, then the body cannot work well. And then if you just put it back, then the body can work the way it should work. And then, and now we have something that can do that. And how do we know? Because I, when I was had these effects and I see it with my family, I am just trying to find a reason. How could this be? Why is this? And then when you read about those studies from here and that, then you said, you know what? This is the paradigm. This is the change in the thinking of how we get this, how we get ill. How do we get to have our system not functioning well? And then when we leave it that way and there's no corrections to it, then it would cascade into different abnormalities. You, The system breaks down, then the other system breaks down, then the other system breaks down and so forth. That's why when we get older and we don't correct that redox balance and we don't we we, we 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 yeah we don't provide things for that one then this cascading of abnormalities just happens and as an elderly that's why you increase and you increase your medications on a yearly basis but once we have these things then slowly it will repair it will repair and it will repair and it will repair and that's why you're 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 going down your on your meds you're discontinuing a lot of the meds and then and you're functioning and and that is my hope that we should not be because i am always there i'm thinking about nursing home or retirement home or retirement community and i think i think we could skip that we could still be functioning well we could still be able to take care of ourselves before the good Lord is going to take, this is going to take us home. But, and that is just my hope and sh to, to share with everybody that, because that is how we feel. Me and my wife, that's how we feel. And when we, uh, when we go to reunions and we see our classmates, we see things, wow, it's really true that we are moving much faster. And for, and for me, I, I have this screws and rods and thing on my back. And most people would just, just like gym, 10 surgeries. And, 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 and our category is just, you're there, you're disabled. You, you, you can't do a thing. You're just unmet and just, just, just be there. But to be able to be on that stage and to be able to go back and do things again, uh, just like you were doing things before, uh, it's just a God-given gift to be able to restore us the way the good Lord has created us. Not 
restoring us by human things. And uh, this is still a force because we this is a breakthrough that brings us back the way the good Lord really has created us to have that inner doctor in us activated. And then our bodies can function the way it was created.